All right, what's going on, everybody? I want to welcome you back to another Real Talk with JT. I pray you're doing well as we, of course, thank the Most High Yah for another blessed day. My title now says, Investing in the Kingdom of Yahweh. But I want to say this off top first. I'm going to use the Bible word, woe. Woe unto you prosperity preachers out here with all these lies. With all these unbalanced messages that you're giving people while you're leading people the wrong way. And the only thing you can talk about is money. Give this, give that. And people's soul is not prospering. Woe unto you right now. And we all know what that woe means. Repent right now while you still got a chance to get it right. I don't know who I'm talking to in this video, but I'm being obedient. As the most I have laid this heavy in my spirit, repent, repent, repent. And I know you're not going to like this message, but I don't care about what you feel like. I'm trying to help you because people are dying by the hour, by the seconds, by the minute. And souls ain't right. But maybe a few of you will hear this message and change because you're going to be held accountable for the way you lead the most highs children. Now, I got that out the way. Investing in the kingdom of Yah. I want to talk about this because when you when you invest in real true people, you see great benefits, especially spiritual blessings. And brother Rodney, I've learned in my life when you pray to the most time to remove, remove all the negative from around you and put you around the right group of people. When he does that, it's a life changing thing. Because now you are around people like yourself who can teach others and oh, oh th thank you Holy Spirit and, and the impact that you have, the example that you are setting People can, people can look at your life and see that you are blessed. Come on, teach Holy Spirit. That impact is so hard, Brother Rodney. Because when I see your life, because I've been knowing you so long, I just want to use you for an example in this teaching as the Most High has guided me on what to say here. But when I look at your life from where you are now than where you used to be, how Pastor Cochran spoke things in your life, how you invest in people, how you serve others. I want to say job that you're doing, brother. Amen. And may the most high continue to elevate you higher and higher because you know something about this investing. I'm not talking about investing in stocks and bonds and in and, and this worldly way, worldly way. I'm talking about investing in people. And I've learned that in my life, when you invest in people, I'm not talking about these people out here that's always begging and and and, and I ain't talking about begging. Let, let me say this right because the Bible teaches us that the poor will always be amongst us. But a lot of people are not poor like that. They are poor stewards. They let their habits get the best of them. They can't make good decisions with money. But when you invest in true people like yourself, like all of y'all on here, the benefits are amazing. Because real people that understand true stewardship not only store up for themselves, but they know how to bless other believers. Come on, teach Holy Spirit. Mm. I hope I can get at least 10 preachers to listen at this that's lost. When you understand the beauty of stewardship, your life is on a whole nother level. But most of us growing up was not taught stewardship. I don't know how these preachers missed that in the Bible because Christ showed taught it. As a matter of fact, at the age of 12, 13, when they was looking for him, what did he say? Don't y'all know about my father's business? The type of questions that he was asking. 
See, most preachers miss that. The parables that he taught. How do you see these parables, but you can't connect these parables with stewardship? Because all these preachers out here, not all of them, but the majority of them out here, all they do is talk about tithing. Malachi. I y'all hear me all the time say, why are you teaching tithing if you haven't taught stewardship? And the abuse of teaching this tithe have caused so many people to just, I ain't going to give nothing at all. Because they haven't been taught right. Prosperity preacher, you don't want to hear this message. You, you, you only stuck on yourself. And that's why a lot of people, Christianity, Christ, a lot of Christians are not blessed because they don't understand what I'm saying in this video right here. You got to invest in yourself. Y'all on here, y'all have blessed my family tremendously. Encouragement is a blessing. Money is... It's money is, is, is if I can get people to understand money is not the only way to bless somebody. The Bible do tell you about money and but the love of money the Bible teaches you also. Ain't nothing wrong with money. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. But blessings come in way more forms than just money. That's why I did that video on, on, on spiritual blessings. But you see the real results when you invest in people, just like I invest in y'all. I've been investing in investing in y'all on her on YouTube for almost twenty years. Well, JT, why you ain't no you you don't have no plaque like the rest of the people? Why you not out there like that? I don't have to be. See, one thing I learned about the Most High, he's not concerned about. Who got the most money, the biggest house, the most expensive clothes? See, all that stuff, you can't take to heaven. But what our Heavenly Father was getting us to show in his, what he was showing us in his word was that you, you, you working in this life to work on your afterlife. And let me go back to scripture. What does it profit a man to gain the world and then shall lose his soul? All this stuff I just named out. That's worldly game. But let me say this. There's nothing wrong with having nice things. You just don't let those nice things have you. But when you invest in these blood-bought believers out here, when you serve others, when you feed and, 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 and looking out for the homeless and, and doing all this stuff, you are on the right track. See, we've been taught once again to the worldly way. I've never heard this world teach God's system, Brother Rodney. They not. Because they want you to invest in the stocks and bonds and, and, and the 401k and all this stuff, et cetera, et cetera. This world system always is getting you to spin, 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 spin. Buy this, buy that. Every new iPhone that come out, every new TV, smart TV, smart car, buy this, buy this, buy that. They, they program your mind to just everything to this world. They looking at the future. But we, as children of the most high, should be striving for eternal life. Paul said the things that are seen are temporary, but the unseen is eternal. Most people right now are not concerned about the eternal. They're only concerned about the temporary. But once again, when you, I asked y'all on live chat the other night, why do you think I'm so blessed? I said, though I may not have all of them, I'm not the richest person. I don't have the biggest has not even a fourth of the biggest, not even what you want to consider to put in the category with these people that got it. I don't even I don't even fit not one bit. I'm in a whole lower category. But I'm rich in the Holy Spirit. And that impact 
that I have had on others. I'm not saying it for no hand clap or credit. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that's in me, I'm so glad that it rubs off it rubs off on other people. Because the most high is so pleased with that. To see that well, I can look at Brother Rodney's life and then Titus Taylor's a reflect a reflection off of Rodney's life. When Rodney put out that book, oh, Satan don't like that, Brother Rodney. Because when you are a good steward, you pounding down on Satan's kingdom. <laughs> you pounding down on it, brother. You have invested in me for all the years I've known you. The most I have worked through this internet here, through this ministry, to put me around exactly the right people. Now, we got a few clowns on here, a few haters on here, but we can look past that. But I have been put around the right people to bless me as we bless each other. I've never seen nothing like this in the church building. I'm just, I'm being honest. Y'all understand stewardship. I wish more preachers would preach stewardship and understand it. Because all this stuff these prosperity preachers are preaching once again, you can't take it to heaven, not a lake of fire. When I'm investing in y'all brothers and sisters, I'm investing in y'all for life. And then you turn right back and sustain me. I'm teaching you how to prosper with your soul. You can prosper financially also. Once again, there's nothing wrong with having nice things, but don't let them nice things have you. You don't serve no broke God. I don't want nobody that I know to gain this world and lose their soul. So to these prosperity preachers, once again, to hell with what you're talking about. Y'all are looking at people's money situation. How much in your bank account? How much you giving today? <laughs> Do you think the most time is concerned about your bank account? He's looking at your heart. He's looking at who you helping. He's looking at why you doing, why you doing what you do. See, let me say this, and I'm trying to close, but this is so heavy in my heart. Most of us have been brainwashed so long growing up, and some even now, because the way we was taught about church. You have always been taught to invest in that church building. Invest in the church, brother. But you ain't been taught how to invest in the body. I give you a good example. Look at your roster, your church roll call. Look at your membership. Look at your mission statement. The majority of what you're doing in your church it's only for the inside of that church. A lot of y'all got a pretty mission statement. A lot of y'all are really talking about doing missionary work, but you're not missionary, you're stationary. When it comes time to helping this sister that don't go to your church, because she ain't never been a part of your membership, you got to call a meeting with the trustees and the deacons just to help somebody that's not a member. I'm so glad Christ night wasn't like that. What's your point again, JT? You've been taught how to invest in that church building, but not the body. Go back and look at what the tithes was, was for back, back in the Old Testament. Most of y'all got a building fund. Notice it's for the building, but not the body. Because if you was more concerned about the body, you would be outside of those walls of your church. I hope I'm helping somebody with this. Because for years and years, especially in the black Baptist church, all you hear about and see is the building fund on the wall. The goal you're trying to reach. 
the car washes on Saturday, the fish plates after church, 50 cent more, you can get a soda water with it, the kids selling candy. Year after year after year, you see all of that stuff taught to build and fun. But who is building up the body? If you would learn to seek ye first, the kingdom of God, all this righteousness, all those other things will be added. Mm. Excuse me. He didn't say seek ye first the building. And I'm, and I'm not knocking buildings. I'm trying to teach somebody something here. When you focus on the body, the people, the blood ball believers, there is a different result. You wonder why you keep getting the same results for 10, 15 years because you're doing the same thing the wrong way. Because when you teach people how to truly give the right way, there is no such thing as somebody begging in the pool of pit. Uh-oh, I done messed up. Because God does not send beggars to the pool of pit. Christ was never concerned about money. He had a treasure room for that. How is it you say you lead in being in, in the example of Yahshua or Jesus the Christ when he wasn't even like that? We all know the story with Judas. Christ's focus was not money. It was your heart prospering, healing, forgiving, teaching, serving. Most preachers don't want to. They don't want to uh, do no serving. They want to be served. Well, when you look at me, all I am is a servant. When you teach people stewardship and get past this little old bit of 10% tithe, which God had give us 10% of Jesus. No way. Somebody catch that later. You will then see true blessings. I'm not saying you can't be blessed with, with, with just doing a little 10%. You, you, but don't be mad at your blessings when you can have way more than a 10%. See, preacher ain't going to tell you that. I am truly blessed because I don't pay 10%. I don't even want to disrespect my Heavenly Father with 10%. Somebody think I'm I'm going against the Bible. Real people will catch that. I'm not knocking the 10%. If that's what works for you, do it. But when you give your all, stewardship goes way past this 10 I'm talking about. When you start talking about your, your hard-earned time, your gifts, your talent, your money, your love, your encouragement, your prayers... This stuff will wear you down. That's why ministry never stops. When you teach people the right way, they would give above and beyond their commitment to their little church building. The Bible told us to go ye therefore teaching and making disciples out here. How am I going to make disciples just by being in, 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 in a church building? Woo! That's investing in others. That's serving others. That's volunteering for others. One thing I love, and let me give a shout out to, to Brother Willie Gibson and the North Texas Food Bank. All the reaching out and helping and passing out food, canned goods, whatever. That's a blessing. Because when you're involved in the food ministry, I have I have been able to reach so many people first by giving them some physical food and then sparking up the conversation with the spiritual food. That's a great time to minister. And I couldn't dare end this video without talking about laboring. When you labor, 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 once again, ministry don't stop. Yes, you get tired from laboring, using your gifts all the time, serving others. It wears you down. But the benefits, 
See, when you use your own money, preachers, <laughs> investing in others and using your own money, your time, your gas, your vehicle, your sacrificing, those people will not mind turning right back around and blessing you. If you really, truly understand Yahshua's parables in the Bible, he was talking about investing. Why do you think on her I go against this little face teaching that people do? Brother, how you need the Bible say you just need a little bit, just little faith. No, it didn't. The Bible didn't say that. Christ criticized his own for having little faith. That's why he would say things like, Oh, ye of little faith, or you faithless generation. That's not what the Bible says. You've been mistaught about the mustard seed. A mustard seed, when it grows, whew, it grows into a expansive tree. It's, it's huge. And God was showing us, it ain't nothing little about me. It ain't nothing little about your faith. The Bible shows us the true investor. <laughs> how to live, how to invest. It's so much to understand in, in those parables, y'all. Because the most high owns it all anyway. I'm going to try to wrap this video up, but I'm going to give you this as I leave. One of my favorite parables in the Bible is the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. The owner of the world. <laughs> Including the land. The most high is the owner. I'm talking about his system now. Here we go, Brother Rodney. Everything he owned, he entrusted it with his stewards. Who was that? Israel, the leaders of Israel. The Most High Yah invested in us. Mm. He put oh, his resources all of this around her for us to manage to receive a return. And it's supposed to be a spiritual and physical return. Because Israel supposed to have been shedding light to the Gentiles. Instead, Israel was selfish. They used the resources for their own selfish purposes. That's what you call an unfaithful servant. Unfaithful. You can read all those parables. But an unfaithful servant is only going to look out for they self. Now if you catch anything I'm saying in this whole video, we are a blessing to be a blessing to each other. That's why the Most High put us around each other to bless each other, to love each other, to serve each other once again. But if you have that love of money, which is the root of all evil, then you're going to serve your money than serving the Most High. That's why he said you can't serve God and mammon in the Bible. You can't serve two masters. You're going to love one and hate the other. So those type of people, it's hard for them to give up their money, to give up their time. And to, your, to all y'all that's always fussing and, and, and debating and arguing about tithes, well, go back to Matthew 23. Christ told them, yeah, you should tie it, but don't forget about the issues that are more important. And let me give you let me give you a news flash. They tied it, and he still called them hypocrites. <laughs> because they were still tied 
but they was looking over the important things, just like people are doing right now, giving with the wrong heart. Well, I pay my tithes, brother. It, that, that goes to show you it's way past time. Read the scriptures. Go back to Matthew 23. That's, and when you look at what those Pharisees was doing, when you when you study, you got to put the word together. You you have to understand that the word have to be rightly divided. Without the understanding, the wisdom of the word, the knowledge of the word, you will have you you will miss it. So I hope and pray that this video will cut a lot of us up. And I pray that some of these old prosperity preachers with, with this unbalanced message that you're preaching, that you repent while you're still breathing. Because time is winding down. God told Jeremiah that my plans are not to harm you, but to prosper you. And he's telling us that same thing. Wouldn't you rather be prospered than harmed? All these prosperity preachers are doing is harming people. And if you're not studying it and, and know the word for yourself, they got you. All they see is money, money, money. All JT see is your soul prospering, prospering. I don't care if you got ten dollars in the bank, ten thousand in the bank. I'm looking at the heart. That's my time, y'all. I love you. Thank y'all once again for always investing in me, <laughs> like I invest in you. And we're gonna continue to grow. We can't help but to go higher and higher. And those that don't want to ride along with it, hey, we're not gonna worry about that. We're going to keep moving. We're going to press forward. So I love y'all. Y'all take care and enjoy your weekend. Shalom.